Did you know that only 7% of your communication is verbal? That means a whopping 93% of your communication is non-verbal. So that's everything from your body language to the way you use your hands and how you use your voice. All of these things can play a massive role in how people perceive you, especially if you're giving a presentation or if you're speaking on a stage. So if you want to find out how you can improve your speaking voice to be able to present more effectively, then this video is for you. And watch until the end because I'll reveal the biggest mistake people make when they're speaking. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ash and in this channel we talk about how to build your self-confidence, improve your communication skills and how to show up authentically as yourself without fear of judgment. So if that tickles your fancy, subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss out new videos I put out each week. The focus of this video is on how you can use your voice to engage people better and present more effectively. However, if you want to find out the right words to use to engage the different types of people, then go ahead and watch my previous video, which covers that in more detail on the four different learning types. I'll link it up here and in the description below. So go ahead and check that out as well. There are six variables to consider when tweaking your voice to achieve different outcomes. And to make it easy for you to remember, I've labeled these with an acronym of TRV Triple P. So remember TRV Triple P, and we'll cover all six of those today. Let's jump in. The first letter is T that stands for timbre. Timbre is nothing but how your voice feels for other people, whether it's scratchy, rugged, or smooth. And studies actually show that more people prefer or tend to prefer voices that are smoother or richer, kind of like a James Bond or Don Draper for those of you who've watched Mad Men. So if you're naturally a person who has a smooth or rich voice, then good for you because that means that people tend to like you more or more quickly. However, for those of you who don't have that, don't worry because there are ways you can use your voice to your advantage when you're, pre when you're presenting. And actually, it's easier for you to grab other people's attention because you are not the norm. And also there are other ways that you can tweak your voice to enhance your presentation style, which hopefully throughout this video, it will be more clear for you. The next element in how to improve your speaking voice is register. Register is how your voice sounds. So your voice can sound a little bit nasal or your voice can be from the throat. This is how most of us speak or your voice can be from the chest, which is very low and deep. All of these play a part in how you are perceived. Low or deep voices tend to be associated more with trust, authority, and power. Fun fact, when a fire alarm goes off with a voice overlay, notice how the voice is of a man with a very deep voice. Studies have shown that people are 30% more likely to respond to a deep voice telling them what to do rather than hearing a higher sounding voice or just an alarm sounder. So next time you're trying to give some instructions or convey authority, try using a deeper voice. The next letter V stands for volume. Volume is of course how loud you are. Loud volumes tend to show excitement or joy versus if you go quieter, then it's possible for you to bring the audience in and make them listen a bit more closely because you're trying to get them to pay attention. And this is extremely useful in presentations and even more so when you're giving a public speaking talk, maybe if you're on a stage. Volume in a social setting is something especially crucial to be mindful of. And some people have a real problem with this and they broadcast no matter where they are and especially so if they're talking over the phone. And you know, don't, you don't have to be shouting for the other person on the other side to be able to hear you. Your voice doesn't actually have to travel the distance physically. So be mindful of the volume, especially when you're in a social setting because this can come across as obnoxious or inconsiderate. So use your volume appropriately and be respectful of others. By the way, if you know somebody who does that and speaks loudly in public and needs to see this video, feel free to share it with them as well. So far in this video on how to improve your speaking voice to present more effectively, we've covered timbre, register, and volume from our acronym TRV Triple P. So now let's dive into the Triple P. The first P is prosody. Prosody is the up and down intonations of your voice and the melody that comes with it. This is the thing that makes your voice more interesting. So if you speak without any prosody in your voice, then it can actually tend to sound a little bit more monotonous, boring, and very hard to listen to. And on the flip side, another example is one where lots of people fall prey. And this is one where you finish off every sentence as if it was a question, even though your sentence was actually just a statement. 
A lot of people do this when they're presenting or speaking to a camera and this can actually confuse your audience. So if that's you, just watch for this and make sure you end your sentences with full stops instead of question marks. And make sure you use your prosody to your advantage and not your detriment. The second P is pace. And pace is of course how quickly you speak. Now you can speak very quickly and speed up your pace so that you can appear to be more energetic and even more enthusiastic or you can dive it right down and make sure that you are conveying your message and try to get that emphasis on the point that you're making. The extreme version of this is of course silence. Trying to get that dramatic effect. Now this is where a lot of people fall prey and don't use silence because they're not comfortable with it. This is where people stumble and instead use filler words like um or er uh or like and that actually appears to make them a bit less refined in their presentation or if they're speaking in general. So in order to be a better presenter, be comfortable with the silence. This is also a good sign of confidence as well. So you need to actually be very comfortable with silence and I actually dive in a lot deeper about this in this video that I can link up here about how you can develop more confidence and be comfortable with filling up your own space. So I'll link that up here and in the description below. So check that out as well. Now the next P is pitch. Pitch usually goes hand in hand with pace and can sometimes change the entire meaning or the sentiment behind what you're saying. For example, what are you doing? Versus what are you doing? Has a completely different meaning and a different sentiment behind it. So I hope you see how pitch can be used to your advantage or your detriment. So to be a better speaker, make sure you maintain a good level pitch throughout your presentation or use it to emphasize the points that you're trying to make. Now, as promised at the start, here is the biggest mistake that a lot of people make when speaking. The biggest mistake that people make is a combination of pace and volume. When you are nervous, you tend to speed up your speech and also quiet down the volume. This basically detracts from anything you're saying and people can't really hear you or understand what you're saying. So they'll label it as mumbling. And if you're mumbling, you fail to grab people's attention. If you fail to grab people's attention, this can drop you from even an okay presenter to a very bad presenter. And this ultimately can lead you to be even more nervous. And when you're more nervous and overly concerned about these things, you will start to develop that annoying shaky voice. Who can relate to that? And this is actually something that holds many people back from presenting, from speaking on the camera, or sometimes even on a one-to-one -one situation. So if you're interested in finding out how you can avoid that and become more confident as a speaker and avoid that annoying shaky voice, then keep an eye out for my next week's video. If you can't wait and you want to become a better speaker now and become more confident, then go ahead and DM me on my Instagram or you can fill out the self-reflection and communication skills assessment I've got in the description below and that will help you as well. Now, if you like this video, hit the like button and share it with your friends. While you're there, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you get notified every time I put out a new video, which is each week. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.